Okay, and welcome back to Blueberry Wolf Bridge, a.k.a. No Intro RPG. And because not everyone has two hours to devote to their possible $7 RPG uh, purchases, I thought I might take another swing at my review for Blood for a Dollar, see if we could... Um, trim it down. My last review was my first live stream for this channel. People from my old uh, dumpster fire of a primary channel came over, so we may have gone a little bit distracted. Hence, well, look, let's call that a dress rehearsal and uh, a little bit of a start of a, a new venture and, and uh, a live stream, a, a, a horse of a different color. For those, for less time on their hands, Blood for a Dollar, a deluxe core rulebook for the micro chapbook RPG rulebook, I mean, micro chapbook RPG system designed by one Noah Patterson. Beginning in approximately 2020, the Micro Chapbook RPG has evolved quickly um, in the short time that it's been around. Um, going, starting off with a simple uh, two to three page um, PDFs on drive through RPG, rising in popularity, expanding out from these simple, elegant rule systems, uh, simple paragraphs for character generation, uh, items, item shops, simple rules for room generation that then got expanded out into deluxe core rule books. The one we're looking at today is a Western setting. There were more expansive ones in a horror setting, traditional fantasy setting. And these deluxe core rule books were noted for taking these simple rules expanding them out, explaining these simple rules in paragraph form, not so much changing them as just letting them, you know, be really understood, and then usually adding flavor language um, to change the setting, uh, to change the world, and a, an additional kind of rule dynamic in the case of a place like Hammer Cross, the Gothic horror setting, a, a fear dynamic or something, making that special rule, anchoring that narrative. And in the case of Blood for a Dollar, we have in addition to the language of changing the willpower di uh, dynamic of the game system to grit, we uh, and changing the the characters from the the archetypes of things like fighters to things like bounty hunters and gunslingers changing out races for things like dis mere descriptor languages like tough, hardened, brawny, nimble, sneaky, and then also changing out the language for the weapons and such. I apologize, I'm getting distracted actually by the heat in the room. Changing out the language for just simply the language for that's just applied to all the terminology in the space and for the rule sets. Really, that's all you need to take the micro chapbook RPG system and turn it into any world you want. At the end of the day, the micro chapbook RPG system, though it changes and evolves and has evolved quite dynamically over just these simple two years that it's really been around, two plus years that it's been around. Um, someone asked me in my one of my last videos, an individual named Sandman said, why aren't you playing the current system? Because I, I, I go on and say that I, I'm playing like 1.5, uh, even though the kind of Noah Patterson talks about the current system being kind of 1.75. Well, the, the kind of current system is, is for kind of people that have been playing for like two years. And like I said, I really only started playing recently. So I really feel like I just haven't really caught up. So it's not like I'm kind of prejudiced or saying that the new system is, is, is not good. It's just I really haven't caught up there yet. But speaking of catching up there, Blood for a Dollar was released early. And so there is a new kind of cool system that's in here. This new rule that they have with this special items. 
uh, dynamic in treasure rolls. That's something new that's unique to Blood for a Dollar that you're not going to get in other deluxe score rule books. So you'll get different things like in Death, in, you know, Dino Valley or Heimer and Cross. You'll get the special items roll and treasure in the treasure rolls in, in Blood for a Dollar. But that won't change the fact that Blood for a Dollar is an early iteration of Micro Chapbook RPG. Okay? And as such, a lot of the um, evolution of the system and a lot of the quality for life, quality of life um, additions that would come along and be added in, in, you know, kind of maybe deluxe core rule books that came later after Blood for a Dollar, which was an early one, or that we saw in um, some of the starter adventure games, um, aren't in Blood for a Dollar. So, for example, um, there's no clear language talking about what happens when you're out of a dungeon. So there's no clear language telling you that when you're out of a dungeon, you can spend five gold pieces or five dollars to rest at an inn. That language is clearly in things like the, you know, um, the basic edition rulebook or, or later um, iterations of the game. That's not here for, in Blood for a Dollar. So before I saw that in later uh, editions that I bought, my initial characters were having a devil of a time. It was really Dark Souls territory. It really was. It was grim. And in addition to that, there's a kind of a typo that occurs here on the steak meal. This appears as a kind of a gambling dynamic. In every other iteration of the rules that I've ever seen, this uh, final item on the items list is like the ultimate healing item, healing both the health and here it's called grits, but in most iterations it's called willpower. This kind of like mana, uh, you know, asset or pool uh, for your characters. That's like in most iterations of the game, all iterations of the game, that's a full heal, that ultimate item. Here it's 1d6. So that's like, I rolled, I bought that item so many times and like twice at least and ate it and rolled a one. Whoo. That hurt until I finally did the math and kind of realized like, oh God, that's, that's got to be a typo or that is the harshest, cruelest, wow, right between the eyes, shoot out at the, the OK Corral, once upon a time in the West, once upon a time up the West, no grease, whoo, yikes, that's tough. And if we're talking about rules, if we talk about, I didn't really even realize this when I talked about, when I did my initial review, but if we talk about the treasure rolls and the special items rolls, technically the introduction of this system indicates or makes it that, I guess, technically you can never find nothing um, on a treasure roll. And for some players, that'll be like um, immersion destroying because, well, it's not the most realistic system, but you know, but technically you can't find nothing if you play by the rules of Blood for a Dollar because um, at the end of clearing a room, you would roll for treasure. On a roll, you'd roll a 1d6. On a roll of 1 to 5, you would find that much gold. On a roll of 6, you would roll um, on the treasure, on the special, on the items. On a roll of uh, 2 to uh, 6, on 99.999% of these games, you would get uh, two through six on an, on the items uh, listing, which is standard for these games. And on a one, you would get nothing, and that would be getting nothing, which is something that's a possibility of life, right, ladies and gentlemen? And those in between, those not identified as, you know, well, uh, sometimes you get Stugats, right? Sometimes you get, you know, you know, you know, nothing, you know? Blood for a dollar. Sometimes you get nothing, blood, you know, whatever. And here, technically, when you would get one, you would get to roll on the special items. Now, now here, sometimes some of these special items, you'd rather get nothing. And I think maybe on one of these, you get nothing. So who knows? Yeah, whatever. It is what it is. So um, you don't get, they're not rules are not clear. You don't have uh, the introduction of uh, dual wielding yet. We don't have uh, any shields in the items. Uh, yet, I don't think. Um, and, you know, so some of those, you know, other rules are not there yet. And like I said, you don't have um, 
anything uh, like it, it's not clear about the healing and, and anything like that. So like I said, so, so on that listing, but at the same time, it's a beautiful book. I like, I like the art. I love the art, actually. I love the writing. This is the first book of Micro Chatbook RPG that I started really playing. So I ran into those problems with that typo. Oh my God, that typo. And I ran into the problems with the not having a rest dynamic, not having an in. And so that's why I would say this is a book you should have because for the flavor and the, the, the Western setting, Weird West, um, whatchamacallit, adventures it has. It has like the, the Pesky Pete's Five Trials. That's five, to get, that's five scenarios. Five scenarios is five games. And right at the end of the day, what is it? What's, what's, what's the rule? What's the game? Hey, look. You get some classes. You get some items. You get some rooms. You get some bad guys. You get the rules. And you got the game. It's awesome. I love this thing. God bless you, N.C. Patterson, whoever you are. You dancing myth in the dark. I love it. It's great. And uh, so what I would say is this. Get this because of the price tag. This is an easy one to say because role playing, what do role playing games books cost? They, they, they tend to cost, what, 20, 30 bucks usually. When these guys are coming in, the PDFs are even cheaper, but the, the books, I love the books, I love the collectability of the books, and then you throw them in a, in a bag, graph paper, pencils, 2D6, the simple ones. So get this for the flavor and get this for the adventures, but because it doesn't have the, the, the robust, all the full complete rules, get this in addition to. So maybe not the, the first one you buy, or maybe not the only one you buy at first, but maybe get this in addition to. Because, oh, the flavor. So much of the flavor. Also, there's uh, quick start rules for the 1.75, you know, most up-to-date uh, rules are on drive through RPG. I haven't played through those rules myself. They turn the, um, they add a kind of gambling dynamic with this, uh, with wits uh, or grit turning into adding something else uh, for some additional thing. I haven't, like I said, I haven't played it, so I can't really tell you how that plays out or, or what I think of it. Uh, but I can tell you what I think of this, which I think is that it's great, but I think if you play it as your first uh, edition of Micro Chapbook RPG, I think you're going to have a wonderful, wonderful time and have a great time, but you're going to feel, oh, you're going to, if you're going to love it, if you love Dark Souls, how do you feel about Souls games? Do you want to feel that way, but like it's 1985, and you're playing it with uh, pencil and paper, and in the Old West? Well then, oh baby, then you're then play it old school. Then play it old school like me, because it's gonna feel like that. You're gonna be pulling your hair out, and if you want to make it a little bit easier, then you get one of the newer set of the rules, and it makes it a little bit easier. Okay. And I think I'm gonna come back, and I think I'm gonna uh, tell you some. Uh, I think we'll work on getting uh, maybe cooking up a magic system for the uh, maybe get a wizard, a dark uh, nether shaman wizard class. And a, a showgirl performer or escape artist going with the charisma build. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe do another quick one. I thought this was going to be a five-minute video. It turned out to be 14 minutes. Hey, getting better. At least it wasn't two hours, right? Okay? I love you. I love Micro Chapel RPG. Uh, and that's it. Boo, boo, boo. Ba, 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 ba. Okay. <laughs> I love you. Oh, wait. Um... Can't, don't show the card. Don't worry. Ah, make it quick. Do it quick. Give it 15 minutes. We can do this. Believe in yourself. No, it's happening. Yes. Playing with the King of Cups. This is the King of Cups in the Osho Zantaro deck. I identify with the King of Cups. I love the King of Cups. Fire of Water, right? Tough to make that balance. And the King of Cups has a tough time keeping that balance. But when he does, good times in the land. 
healing in the land. Okay? It's important sometimes to remember, okay, that when we talk about balance, that means the balance flows throughout. That means the balance throw, flows through the salt. The balance flows through the pepper. Does that make sense? Right? It's not, balance is not, <laughs> balance is not mom and dad are at a brutal, icy standoff at the zero degree parallel. That's not balance, right? That's about a gag, right? Balance is, dad's made the conceits and the concessions, mom's made the conceits and concessions, dad's taken on board, mom's taken on board, right? Dad can do the internal calculations of what is important to mom. Mom can do likewise. They can trust that when each other's not in the room, the other one's not scheming or scamming against them, but rather the other one's going to uh, take what the other one needs to have put into place, put into place as well. The course of actions that need to go forward. And when that happens, the good times can roll. Because there can be trust. Seventeen minutes. Hey, seven plus one is eight. I like the number eight. I got a birthday coming up. I'm going to be 48. Oi. Blood for a dollar. Do, do, do. 1776. Well, I don't know why I said that number. I'm getting, I saw 17. What is that? We're getting old. We're getting long. Ah. Going on too long. I gotta stop. I love you. Bye.